Welcome back. In this series of videos, I'll explore story structure and the various ways you can structure your stories. In this video, I'll give you a brief overview of structure. The next three short videos will explore the traditional three-act structure, and I'll finish off by exploring some alternatives to the three-act structure. Let's get into it. The three-act structure has its roots in Aristotle, who theorized that stories should be divided into three parts which lead into each other in a cause-and-effect manner. He believes stories found in books and poetry should be a chain of cause-and-effect actions or beats. Each action must instigate their own set of actions until the story runs its course at the conclusion. Having a series of plot points connected by a series of cause-and-effect events unifies the action of the narrative. Without this unity, you don't have a story only a series of loosely connected events. Aristotle laid the foundation of modern literature in his book Poetics, which is still widely regarded to this day. The structure was formalized by screenwriter Sid Field in his 1978 work Screenplay. Classically speaking, all stories consist of three acts. An act is a section of the story that divides the action and is centered around one or more plot points. A plot point is an action that directly influences what happens next in the story. There are many ways to divide a story, but the most common is to use the three-act structure. In the first act, we see the normal world of the hero and offer exposition that establishes the world and the story. The first act ends with an inciting incident that draws the hero into the main action of the story. In the second act, we have the rising action, which leads to the midpoint and crisis. The second act usually ends with a turning point where it looks like the hero and his allies will fail. The third act leads us to the climax. The hero and his allies have reached the point of no return and must either prevail or perish. And this is where some of them do perish. Key allies are lost at this point. Then the story winds down in what's known as the denouement. This is where the life of the hero returns to normal. Before we continue, don't forget to like, subscribe, and ding the bell so YouTube will notify you when I upload new videos. And don't forget to check the description of this video for book recommendations as well as all the tools and resources I use in my writing and video production. Back to the video. How big should each act be? Typically, the first act takes about the first quarter of the story. The second act takes about half and the third act takes the final quarter or so of the story. Most novels have 10 to 12 chapters, but you can have as many as you like. For the sake of easy math, I'll say we're writing a book with about 10 chapters. That means two or three chapters will be in Act 1, six or seven chapters will be in the second act, and two or three will be in the third act. Yes, I know those fudgy numbers don't add up to exactly 10, but art isn't an exact science. Or science at all, for that matter. It's more of a spitball in the right direction. My advice is to just roll with it. We can also break each act down by scenes if that might be more helpful. There's no hard and fast rule as to how long a scene should be, but a good rule is to make each scene about 1500 words. There are also no concrete rules for how many scenes you should have in a chapter or act. You can have as many or as few as your story demands. But standard convention says that the first act should have approximately 14 scenes. At 1500 words per scene, that's about 20,000 words for the first act. The second act typically has 28 scenes for a total of 40,000 words. The third act tends to have another 14 scenes for another 20,000 words. In this video, I'll spend most of our time discussing this approach to storytelling since it's the most common in Western TV, film, literature, and other media. In the last part of the series, I'll discuss some alternatives to the three-act style. I'll elaborate on some of these in later videos since they're interesting approaches to storytelling. The Benefits of Structure The benefit of the three-act structure, or any structure for that matter, is that they will help you remain focused and give each scene a clear purpose and direction. Structure and form aren't some cure-all for a bad story, but it's a good place to start. A few things before we get into the weeds with the three-act structure. I think we need to acknowledge something. I won't be giving you any hard and fast rules here, only guidelines. If you stick dogmatically to a rigid plot structure, your work will seem less like an organic story and more like a collection of scenes checked off a list. And I'm saying that as a plotting nerd myself. If you don't think any of the points of the three-act structure or any others I mention apply to your story, ditch them. You know your story better than I do. Only you can decide how much plotting your story needs and don't let anyone tell you different. 
You can also check out my video on plotting versus pantsing to get a feel for what kind of writer you are. Remember, real story structure has less to do with how things happen and more to do with why things happen. When in doubt, bring it back to your characters. I hope that helped. In the next video, I'll start by looking at the three-act structure beginning with Act 1. I'll see you there. Until next time, good writing and Calamus Gladio Fortior.